When I was 27, I spent a month on a research trip in Trinidad, second stop after Kingston, actually. Um, and officially, I was there to investigate the Trinidadian left's response to the Cuban Revolution. Unofficially, I figured everything should count as research, including checking out one of the Caribbean's best party scenes. My, I teamed up with my friend Marissa, who was doing a PhD in psychology, to sublet an apartment off the legendary Ariapita Avenue, otherwise known as where Carnival happens. Uh, we were supposed to have this place to ourselves, but the normal resident, Sheila, kept making up excuses not to leave. Instead, she just slept on the couch and spent the whole day watching documentaries about extraterrestrials and chain smoking. But the location was great, so we figured, hey, it might be useful to have a local contact. Now, I've never been the kind of person who ignores riptide warnings or who jumps from high places but I have a strong tendency to say yes to invitations, especially if I'm traveling. That first week, Sheila introduced me to a pharmacist named Michel who worked around the corner. He would came to Trinidad from Syria in part to get away from the war. A couple days later, I ran into him by coincidence at the travel office as I was planning to book tickets to the island of Tobago. Who knew? He was planning to go the next week with a bunch of friends and invited me to stay with him. I thought, yeah, why not? Sheila knows and seems to trust this guy. He's got a friendly smile. And to be totally honest, I was pretty cheap during this phase of my life. So I really like the idea of not paying for accommodations. Later that day, that evening, I met a man named Sam at a bar. Now, Sheila had warned us to be somewhat careful when we went out. Port of Spain does unfortunately have a rather high crime rate. But drunk me decided that Sam was harmless, a uh, slightly overconfident bro in a collared shirt in his 40s. When he said that he could get us tickets to the Coco Devils party that weekend, I thought, hell yes. So this is a Juve style party, which means that it starts at 3 a.m. and goes until dawn. Everyone dances around outside following a gigantic truck that plays music, serves alcohol, and you cover each other in powder or paint or some kind of liquid. The specialty for Coco Devils was chocolate sauce. But the tickets were $100, which seemed a little bit steep for my budget. Maybe should have known something was off when I followed up with Sam the next day. Uh, I'm surprised to hear from you after you spent the rest of the night talking to someone else, he said. And then he clarified that he couldn't get us free tickets, but he'd be willing to pay for half. At this point, Marissa applied her background in psychology and decided she would just buy her own. But I don't know, if he wanted to give me some money, sure, whatever. Uh, so he came by, picked us up, took us to the ticket office, and handed me some cash. On the way back, Sam's hand lingered on my thigh in a way that I didn't really like. He asked us to let him know if we were going out later that night, and I said okay, but I wasn't sure I needed to see this man quite so often. The thing is, Port of Spain is small, has about 40,000 people, they tend to stick to certain neighborhoods, so we ran into Sam at a bar on the avenue that night anyway. And it was okay. I chatted with his friends for a bit, went home early, uh, sent him a text to say we'd see him at the big party. He responded with a tirade. I told you to let me know if you were going out, but then I have to run into you. You think I'm just another man that you can use. Give me back my money. I don't even need it. I spent twice that much tonight, but I'll send a worker tomorrow to pick it up. Who is this guy? Okay, I was kind of using him, but he can't buy me for $50. <laughs> he sent some strange voice message of a random woman saying, you, Sam is a nice guy and you should not take advantage of him. <laughs> and then this conversation ends with what feels like a threat. You think you can just walk into that party tomorrow, but my friends are there. Things don't work that way here. Marissa and I decide to bet that this is just male ego talking. And we're right, it pays off, the gamble, it's fine. We go, we dance until 8 a.m., covered in chocolate sauce. Uh, the organizers come, they hose us off. There are hundreds of people at this party and no sign of Sam. 
A little after, we're, feeling, we're filling in Sheila about this saga. She's laughing along, and she agrees that, yeah, this man sounds like an asshole. Then I play that weird voice recording for her, and her facial expression completely changes. Sam, she says. His name's Sam? What's his phone number? I thought so. She stands up, starts pacing, pulls out a cigarette. He's my brother. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm worried I've just torpedoed my relationship with my roommate by insulting her sibling. But then Sheila gives us a litany of horrors. Sam doesn't know where she lives because he's been disowned from the family for stealing from their parents. He's involved in all kinds of dodgy things, including drugs and very likely human trafficking. He's frequently seen with Venezuelan sex workers. At one point, he broke a woman's jaw in a bar. This is why I told you to be careful, Sheila said. You can't trust everyone. Obviously, this information is very overwhelming, and the timing is also t intense, because not only was that previous situation much more dangerous than I thought, but in a couple of hours, I'm supposed to get on a plane to go to Tobago to meet Michelle, the Syrian pharmacist, and seven of his male friends. And the only one of these people that I've even met before, I have seen exactly twice for about 60 minutes. To make matters worse, Michel had called me earlier that day to let me know that the place was smaller than he expected, and he and I were probably going to have to share a bed. <laughs> we huddled and debated, and then Sheila admitted she didn't even know Michel very well. Marissa, instead of just telling me not to go, uh, started telling me how if anything terrible happened, then I shouldn't sleep and should ask for morphine, because apparently this helps prevent the formation of traumatic memories, according to studies. <laughs> but one dramatic revelation was not quite enough for me to change my plans and my whole personality on a dime. So Sheila calls Michelle and tells him that he's going to have to deal with her if anything goes wrong. And I cross my fingers and I go to the airport. My flight's delayed, so I arrive around midnight. Michelle shows up to pick me up with his friend Gassan, who uh, has sunglasses and a gold chain and a nice-ish car, I guess. I don't know. I've already proven that I am a terrible judge of character. I uh, hold my breath and I get in the car. Almost immediately, Ghassan starts blasting Shakira. <laughs> I'm on tonight, you know my hips don't lie. Michelle turns around and grins at me. You know, people think Shakira's Colombian, but she's actually half Lebanese. I think, maybe these men aren't going to murder me. <laughs> and they don't. I spend three days on the beach smoking shisha. I learn a new card game. Uh, and because Michelle and I don't have a common culture, we have to skip the small talk. Our conversations are immediately deep. We talk about whether or not God exists, what we want out of our lives, Caribbean poetry, the Syrian civil war, and how much he misses home. While I thankfully never ran into Sam again, Michelle and I developed an enduring friendship over those few weeks in Trinidad, and we're still in touch to this day. Looking back on all of this, I learned one thing, and that was to stop being so cheap and just pay for my own things. <laughs> Otherwise, it's hard to know how to feel. Obviously, I could have been more careful, but it's hard for me to totally regret the adventurous streak that ran through my 20s, one that, if I'm honest, is not entirely gone. Because while I am very glad that I was not lured into a sex trafficking ring by my roommate's surprise criminal brother, I am also aware of all of the beautiful people who've come into my life, in part because I didn't do the smart thing. Thanks. <laughs>